the Secret Service turned over only one text message, that is one single text message, relating to the inquiry into the January 6th attack on the Capitol. According to a letter obtained by CNN from the Homeland Security Inspector General to the January 6th committee, the IG had asked for a month's worth of records from 24 Secret Service personnel and was provided with how many? One. Uno, one. One single text exchange about January 6th. This comes as the National Archives has asked the Secret Service to investigate, saying they are aware of the, quote, potential unauthorized deletion of agency text messages. Gordon Hedell is the former assistant director of the Secret Service. He was also previously inspector general at the Defense Department and Labor Department, joins us now. Gordon, great to see you. Thank you for being with us. We hope you can provide insight into what's going on. I just want to remind our viewers of the timeline here. Congress informed the Secret Service it needed to preserve and produce documents related to January 6th on January 16th, 2021, and again on January 25th, 2021, for four different committees who were investigating the Secret Service migration, for which there is some blame for the absence of these text messages, this migration where maybe these messages got deleted, didn't start until the 27th after those two requests. So in your experience, how could you explain that? Well, John, first of all, um, I think the Secret Service um, has to act quickly and responsibly to avoid any further impression that it is not fully cooperating with Congress. I believe their focus now needs to be on trust, transparency, and accountability if I'm, if I'm speaking, let's say, as an inspector general. Uh, you know, the way the service has handled this situation has created doubt. I think that that doubt began when the Secret Service allowed one of its agents to serve in a political position in the White House. And the doubt has continued up to today in its handling of this congressional request for records. But, you know, first of all, we don't know exactly what is missing here. And the service either has records or they don't. I do know that the Secret Service has a process, and it's a good process, at least in my, in my memory, for how it handles and maintains uh, all records to include text messages. Um, if the service doesn't have those records now, as they've indicated, then they should explain why and whether these messages were deleted. And if they were deleted, was it intentionally or was it by accident? So I, I just, I think the service has, has to move very quickly on this because time's working against them. And I think, um, you know, they, they're an agency that, uh, that's enjoyed the status of being one of our nation's most elite organizations. And I do, I think they have to work to maintain that and they, they need to do it as quickly as they can. Gordon, based on what you know, and thank you so much for joining us this morning. Based on what you know, is there any logical explanation for why these messages, you know, not others, because they turned over, uh, turned over other documents related to January 6th, but these text messages, now they can't find? Well, Caitlin, in my opinion, uh, this, would, this situation is unusual. The service, as I said, has a system for protecting and preserving all of its records. Now, it's the responsibility of Secret Service leadership to follow its policies, including its process for you know, protecting text messages, particularly messages that might fall into the category of evidence. And you know, the circumstances on January 5, January 6 were such, and I'm talking about intelligence information and about the fact that the, the insurrection um, this should have been sufficient to cause leaders in the Secret Service uh, to be especially sensitive to the need to pervert, preserve and protect such records. So I think, I, I think they have a perception problem, if not a real problem. And um, I, don't, I don't think or I don't know whether there's anything sinister here. I hope not. But I think the Secret Service leadership is obligated to be forthcoming and clear this up as soon as possible. You made an allusion, Gordon, to Tony Arnato, who is someone who worked at the Secret Service and then was brought in as a political appointment as Deputy Chief of Staff for Operations inside the White House, correct? Right. And now is back at the yeah. Secret Service. But talk to me about why you see that as potentially problematic. Well, John, the Secret Service does its best to not permit itself to get, become embroiled in politics. 
and that, and the reason's obvious because they protect the president and and the vice president, and to to be embroiled in politics dis, distracts them from the main focus of their job, which is to protect the president and vice president. And so, in this case, you had a special agent who happened to be one of the executives moved over to the White House, probably obviously at the request of the former president, but. And we don't know exactly what the position of the director of the Secret Service was, but I can tell you this is one of those moments in time when bells, whistles, and sirens go off because that's when a director has to say, no way, this doesn't work. It works against us. It works against you, Mr. President. And I don't know if that was done, but this is one of those times when the director has to stand firm. Um, maybe he did, but if he did, it didn't work. And you have a situation where the president walks from the Oval Office across Lafayette Square over to the church. Um, from what I have read and understand, uh, this agent was involved in helping to plan that and in escorting the president over there. The way this ended up, it created a lot of problems for the Secret mm -hmm. Service appearance, appearances and so on. Go so. Ahead. Politics, you want to keep out of it. Gordon Hiddell, uh, thank you so much. I think he gave us a much better understanding of everything Absolutely. that's going on here. And just to be clear, as you well know, Caitlin, Tony Ornato, key in Cassidy Hutchinson's testimony because Ornato is who she says told him about events that happened uh, in the president's vehicle that day. Something that they later tried to dispute. But, of course, she's testified, and that's why people have raised questions. Well, if she's testifying and you're disputing it, that dispute it, disputing that should be in testimony as well. I want to bring in our Jeffrey Tubin uh, to discuss this. Jeffrey, we we're just uh, getting um, this in again. It's saying the Secret Service was only able to provide a single text exchange to the Inspector General who had requested a month's worth of records for 24 Secret Service personnel, according to a letter to the January 6th committee obtained by CNN. Uh, hello, Jeffrey. Any plausible explanation for this, you think? Uh, you know, this is based on our colleague Jamie Gangel's reporting. Uh, this just is pathetic. I mean, this is just unbelievable that um, something so important and so obviously important even at the time. I mean, this isn't like the Secret Service was told months later, um, go back and get this date that, uh, you know, didn't seem significant at the time. Obviously, everybody knew January 6th was enormously important. It, according to Jamie's reporting, um, the Secret Service was told on January 16th, just 10 days <laughs> later, to preserve all all the uh, email and, and text traffic. And they didn't. And what happened? I mean, how did this possibly happen? And who's responsible? And most importantly, where are all these texts? I mean, these questions, uh, you know, cry out for answers. Well, the, the, how can this be is, is the question, especially considering you know, the importance of an agency like the Secret Service, Jeffrey, and what they do. Well, right. Well, I mean, the, the, the how can this be is, is obviously the, the right question, and there are two possibilities. Um, one possibility is incompetence, which is something that I believe is generally the explanation for most things. Um, at, at least according to this report, um, they seem to have trusted the individual's who had the phones to preserve things as opposed to doing it centrally, which seems deeply idiotic. Mm -hmm. But um, the, so, so the question is, you know, was this all just a terrible mistake? Um, alternatively, was there some sinister activity, an attempt to ditch correspondence that they didn't want people to see? Mm -hmm. I mean, th again, that seems unlikely, but something went terribly wrong here and you know somebody's got to figure out what happened